Hi, it's Kev here with a quick remote learning tip. What I'm going to show you here is definitely not best practice when it comes to remote learning. This is for teachers that have absolutely no idea of things like Google Classroom, Seesaw, Microsoft Teams that need something to quickly connect their students and pulling some simple tools together to do that. And we're going to use Google Slides to do that. Um, I would really recommend you have a look at some of our guides on Classroom and Seesaw and some platforms like this. But if you have a extremely limited understanding of technology and you just need something to get you started for the interim, this is uh, a quick and simple entry point to remote learning and creating a daily planner that you can communicate with your students. Okay, so here we are. We're in Google Slides and this is what we're going to use for this tool. I have made a slide here, which I'll share with you in just a moment, that has some images and things on it. But essentially what we're going to do here is just use this Google slide to create links to different things on the web that we can tap into. So the reason we're going to use Google slides is we can publish this to the web. It generates essentially like a little mini website turns the Google slide into a website and you can type on it when you edit it it's live you teach your students would see any changes that would quickly uh, you've made to it and they can follow along and tap into it quickly and easily so let's have a look at how this would work so here is the slide I have put together what I've put in here is a text box with some simple instructions of what your students might do for the day and I have then put some permanent images in here for a few other things. I'm going to go through these one by one. So my text box here has just got some simple instructions um, and telling them what to do. And any time that you want to insert a link to those things. So for instance, I've got here for integrated studies today that you could watch a YouTube clip on whatever it is you're after. So let's say that they our our um, unit was on Antarctica. So if I go to YouTube. Okay, so here we are in YouTube. I've got a video clip that I might share with my students. Um, little video clip here, and I want to link this into my Google slide. So all I can need to do here is I can either just copy the URL up the top here, the web address, or I can copy video URL here. And I jump back into my Google slide. And where it says watch this YouTube clip, I'm going to select that text. I'm going to right click and I'm going to link that to the YouTube video I have just found. And essentially that is what we're doing with everything on this page. If I had a Google Doc, so I went to docs.google.com. And I just wanted a document that my students could write questions to me on all day. So I wasn't checking my email or I could just have a Google Doc that I could write some notes on. I could start up a blank document here. And I would need to quickly change a few things on this document, namely the sharing permissions. So... going to call this class doc. At the moment, this document says only people at my organisation or my work can see this. Um, I'm going to change it to anyone with the link. So that means that anyone with the link can now edit it. Going to hit save. Hit done. And that means that when I link to this in my PowerPoint slide, my students that can see this link would be able to um, edit this document and type what they want in here. And I could leave them a message. I could leave them a message here and they can type on that also. So for that to happen, I need to get the link to the document. So I hit share, copy link or copy link from there. Okay, so here we are back in Google Slides and I want to find the icon for my chat here and I'm going to hit on insert and link on the image. When I hit that, I'm going to hit apply. 
if I had an entire class folder of work or things that my students were working on, I would do a similar thing. I could jump into Drive and I could share a folder with them instead of just sharing a document. I would do that in exactly the same way as I would do a Google Doc. So I've got a class chat here, I've got a class folder, I can link to really popular websites. So if I wanted my kids to do some exercise, some daily exercise on Go Noodle, again, I just punch in Go Noodle into my web browser. So I'm in Go Noodle and there's a whole heap of activities for kids to do at home this week, or for the week I should say. I can copy that in, I jump back into my slide. I can then insert a link and this time I'm going to link to the student activities on Go Noodle. And the last thing that I'm going to do is if I had a video conference, I might say that there's click here for today's video link at 9.30am. So if you watch our videos in the about how to set up a Google Meet, which will only take you a few minutes, you'll get a link for that video and you would just pop it in here. You'll have to change that link on a daily basis because it generates a fresh link um, each day, but that's not a difficult thing to do. So you just need to select the text for your Google Meet and again, insert a link and you would have a link in there from Google Meet that would take you to your classroom meeting. So. Essentially what you're doing is putting a few different things up, some instructions, some links to different things, a class document, you might have a class folder and a Google meeting. You've brought a few things together here that you can communicate with your students if you need to in a pinch. Okay, so how do we actually get this up on the web quickly and easily so our students can see it? So what I need to do is hit file and I need to hit publish to the web. Now what this is going to do is going to give you a link and it's going to give you a few options in here. So you can play around with these sorts of things. Um, you can force your kids to, um, you can force this so as that only students from your school can open it, which will give you far more security on this so that students from, and, and anyone from outside your school can't see this document. You could tick that box there and I would change that from changing every three seconds to every minute it will just keep moving by default until a student clicks on it so when we hit publish it will generate a web address and this is what you need to share with your students now you could email this out you could put it up on your school website um, however you communicate with your students parents you could send it out to them and if I then just pasted that into a web browser there's my blank slide that was in it. If I keep pushing, I'm going to end up with our class um, planner. And you'll see if I click on anything like our YouTube clip here, it should take me exactly where I want to go. This is Tyler. And essentially there it is, guys. The world's most simple daily planner. Um, again, not best practice. I would really recommend looking at things like um, Google Classroom, Seesaw and the like, but this will definitely get you out of a spot if you need to share information with your students until you get a better understanding of how to manage remote learning.